Ni hao. Thank you for having me. Um, so uh, I'd like to start off with the, uh, I've, it's a great honor to be here. Uh, I've spoken many times at uh, DEF CON and it is a double honor to be speaking in a uh, country that I love to visit and love to be here and uh, also at DEF CON. So thank you for that. Um, one thing to talk about when I'm, uh, how I came up with this talk. I gave a talk at DEF CON 22 uh, called Around the World Nady Cons. And basically that was a talk based on hacking culture. It's like what hackers are and how we're perceived. And it was really well received in the community um, and also in the Chinese community. Um, there was, a, it's actually translated and it's on your video websites as well. You can watch that talk uh, and see it and it's uh, subtitled into Chinese. and. Uh, people came up to me afterwards uh, when I've come to Beijing and uh, Shanghai and, th and they've said it's like I, I really appreciate that talk so I thought it was just natural to do a talk similar to that but different but targeted for uh, here and if you'll notice we have a problem and just like through the whole DEF CON what you've heard are talks of people talking about problems and then hopefully finding a solution for that my talk is no exception, but my talk is about people and our perceptions and our culture. Um, because if you'll notice, there is a bad problem. Because you see here, when I uh, searched in Google, I see the word hacker and look how negative all the images are. Look how scary that looks. That's frightening. It's like if I would have used Baidu, maybe I would have gotten better images, uh, but I don't know. It's like, but these are very scary, negative connotations of the word hacker, uh, which is not the way it's supposed to be. And the reason why I titled it uh, Dark Visitor Devalued Ally is because in China, it's like in, in the language, dark visitor translates to hacker. That's what we're using the word. We're using hacker to just automatically mean dark visitor, like that is something negative, uh, which it should not be. So uh, a little bit more about me, um, I always do a, like, I like to do a funny little intro. Um, you may have seen me rob a bank on uh, the TV show uh, Breakthrough. Uh, you may have seen me in one of the videos or you may have seen me on the news. Uh, most importantly, you probably have seen me actually inside your facility robbing you because that's what my main job is, is I try to test people's security by being the bad guy before the bad guy is there. And these are actual all um, different videos of me uh, in places that I should not be. Uh, I'm very good at that. So um, that's all you need to know about me. Um, but let's delve into what does it mean to be a hacker? What does it mean to the, to the main culture? Well, in this day and age, it's seen as a criminal. When people on the news, they say a hacker stole uh, this much money from a company or hackers went and they attacked a, uh, a train system or a water plant or an energy grid or hackers went in and um, did those things. That's not the right way to do it. That's not true. Criminals did that. Criminals stole from that company using those tools that a hacker may have created or a methodology that a hacker uses, but it was criminals who did that, not uh, hackers, not always hackers. Um, I try to explain it to people that are not familiar with computers by talking about the analogy of the taxi driver. Do everybody here think that taxi drivers is, is a good profession? It is an honest profession. It is a profession that people can do to earn money for their families. It is an honorable profession to be a taxi driver. What does a taxi driver do? He uses his skills, his abilities to use his equipment, which is the car, to drive people from one place to another for money. That's what he does. That's what a taxi driver does. But at the same time, a getaway driver, what does he do? 
for bank robbers, a getaway driver who helps people get away from crimes. What does he do? He uses his skills and his abilities to use his equipment in a way to get people from one place to another for money. Correct? So everybody, these two people are exactly alike. So when I talk about taxi drivers, I'm basically talking about getaway drivers too. And we should all look at taxi drivers suspiciously because they also may be getaway drivers. You know, have you ever gotten in a cab wondering like, I hope he's not going to a robbery. It's like, I hope he's not, he's not going to, he's not already just gotten off of a robbery and we get stopped by the, but you don't think those things because you don't equate a taxi driver with a getaway driver. So why do we actually equate hackers automatically with criminals? That's not the way it should be. And it didn't used to always be that way. It used to be when you talked hackers, you were talking about artists. You were talking about creators, inventors, because at the very heart of it, hacking is looking at the world from a different perspective. It's trying to change things for the better. That is what hacking is about. Uh, I'm not going to uh, mangle the language. It's like I have too much respect for it to try to pronounce the names. So uh, I will point to like our first one here. This is the inventor of the modern day version of paper. All the programs that you have, uh, all the papers that you've been reading are based on what this uh, gentleman has created. That was a hacker. He looked at what the paper was back in that time and he said, we can do this better. We can add some more compounds. We can experiment, find out what are the better compounds to make paper more reliable. And that's why we have paper because of him. And he's from China. Right here, Shin, it's like the magnetic needle compass from China. That was an inventor. That was a creator. That was a hacker who did that. A hacker made that happen. It's like, I don't know how he decided to make the, the compass. You know, it's like, who, how do you get the first idea? It's like, I wonder if I put a magnet and some water and see if I can tell the direction. But it worked. So I'm happy with the results, even though I don't know how it operates. Uh, and also the professor here helped create fiber optics. One of the main reasons why we're able to communicate, the reason why we have the internet, the reason why uh, we have a global community is based off of his work. And he's a hacker. When you look at something and you try to make it better, you try to change something, when everybody in the world tells you this is the way we always do it. This is the way it's always been. And you say, really? How about if we do it this way? That's hacking. We were all born hackers. Trust me, we all were born hackers. Everybody remembers being a kid trying to like get away with something or building something. And uh, Dan Kaminsky, I just heard him say a really great thing that I'm going to steal from him, but give him credit, uh, where he said, uh, one of the main things that a child does is ask why. That's universal, I'm sure. You all have children and one of the main things they learn to say when they're little is why. Well, it's because of this, why? Well, it's because of this, why? It's because of this. Why? It's like, and we have to answer those questions if we're hopeful, if we do that, because that's hackers, that curiosity, that wanting to know how things work. That's not just settling for the main answer that you give, but wants to delve deeper and find out the main reason. That's what it means to be a hacker. Um, another thing, it's like some other hackers that are, are, are also even more famous because in the security, we always uh, joke about people who use uh, too many uh, Sun Tzu quotes. And the reason why is because there's a lot of great Sun Tzu quotes. I was in the Brazilian airport just uh, a few, uh, like a month ago, and there was a uh, Portuguese language book of Sun Tzu, The Art of War because it is still to this day used for strategy thinking. It is used for businesses. It's like because of the, the things that can be translated. This is hundreds and hundreds of years old, but he revolutionized 
the way we conducted warfare and was able to translate that into business. That's a hacker. He took what everybody said, this is the way you're supposed to do it, and he was like, no, let's try it this way. And that's one of the key things. It's like you have to be able to do that. You have to be able to think outside the box. Uh, Soon Ben also uh, is one of that, uh, uh, created another book of the art of war, took the work from Sun Tzu and worked with it and actually uh, added to it and expanded the knowledge base, which was an amazing thing at that time. It's like to actually say, like, let's try to go forth. And it is still a work that it's like uh, well-respected to this day. Um, the 36 stratagems, um, my first company uh, that I founded was actually based on stratagem one. Uh, stratagem one is to cross the sea by fooling the sky. In other words, a familiar sight provokes no notice. And basically that's what I do. I walk into some place and look like I'm supposed to be there when I'm not supposed to be there and I break things. Uh, I use stratagem one very often. And I also use stratagem 36 sometimes when I get caught. Uh, if you don't know what stratagem 36 is, uh, stratagem 36 is run away. So I use that quite often too sometimes. Uh, so um, I, and I actually have that book right there uh, signed by Galleon. It's like, uh, which is uh, one of my favorite books. So uh, there is a lot of resources that come from China. There's a lot of innovation that comes from China. There's a lot of hackers that come from China. You just don't normally label them that way. Instead, you call them entrepreneurs, or you call them inventors, or you call them creators. But in actuality, what they're doing is hacking the process. They're actually innovating. They're coming up with something new and trying to make something happen. And that's an important thing. So. When we talk about hackers, that's one thing. Okay, because people tell us, like, yeah, Jason, but are you a white hat hacker or a black hat hacker? Are you a gray hat hacker or a purple hat or green hat? I don't know, just whatever hat hacker, right? And unfortunately, my head's too big to actually wear hats. So I always tell them I'm a no hat hacker because that's the way it should be. Because when you go to a banker, and if you look at all these stories, these are all bankers that committed crime. All these bankers committed embezzlement. All these bankers committed fraud. So why don't we have black hat bankers? Why isn't there a black hat banker? Why don't I go to my bank and when I'm trying to get a loan from the company, do I tell the bankers like, well, you're a white hat banker, aren't you? Because I don't want a black hat banker working with my funds. I want a white hat banker. They would look at you silly. Like, what do you mean? Well, that's the way I look at hacking. There is no hat. You're either a hacker or you're a criminal or they, or sometimes you can be a hacker that is a criminal, but there's a, there's no such thing as making hacker equated with the crime. If I know how to create a gun, and I create and build guns and someone else then takes that gun and then commits a crime with it, does that make them a gunsmith? Do they know how to build a gun? Do they know how to create that gun and make the bullets or anything like that? No, they're using a tool to commit a crime. Back in the ancient days, people got robbed. People got uh, stuff stolen from them by someone with a, a sword. Someone had a sword and said, give me all your money because that was a better way to commit a crime because before they only had stones, but now they have swords. So give me your money. Well, then bows and arrows came around, which were way better at you to use to commit crimes. And so the robbers started using bows and arrows saying, okay, give me your, give me your money. It's like, then guess what happened? Crossbows came over. And now people started committing crimes with crossbows. And then people started committing crimes with guns. Then several, you know, decades ago, people started committing crimes with computers. Just because the means of crime or the means of tools for the crime have changed, doesn't make them anything more special. They are just criminals. They did, not buy, they did not create the hacking methods. They don't usually create the hacking tools. 
They download them off the internet, usually for free. They watch a video trying to how to use it, and then they execute the crime. That doesn't make them hackers. That makes them someone who knows how to follow the instructions. It's like, so that's one of the things that you have to understand. It's like when you talk about that. So there's no black hat hackers. It's like, there's no black hat, there's no white hat. There's just people who are trying to make things better, people who are trying to discover vulnerabilities and, and, and improve society. And then people who exploit those knowledge for crime. And those are the ones that are the criminals. Because hackers provide a valuable service uh, to society by discovering vulnerabilities and reporting them. Basically what that means is there has not been one major vulnerability uh, that has come out that was created by a hacker. Hackers do not create these uh, vulnerabilities. They do not create these defects in the software or the hardware. They do not make those vulnerabilities. What they do is they discover them. That vulnerability is always there. It was already there when it was made. No one knew about it. It was always there, but someone who was searching, someone who was looking to make things better, discovered it. And that's the important part. Um, I'm gonna actually uh, uh, talk to about Dan once again, because uh, Dan Kaminsky is like, uh, several years ago, there was a huge vulnerability in our internet that affected the world. It affected the world. It could have effectively taken down the internet as we know it today. Dan Kaminsky discovered this flaw. He saw this flaw was bad. Did he profit off of it? Did he try to exploit it? No. What did he do? He reported it. He coordinated with the help of others. It's like, and he got several other people and other groups and other companies involved to work together silently in, in secret so it wouldn't become public and be damaging. And he coordinated this whole discovery so it could be patched and fixed. And that's the reason why the internet was still working was because he found us a, a problem that was already there just not discovered and he made it public the responsible way by working with the people to help fix the problem does that sound like a criminal but he's a hacker is that something that a hacker would do and the answer is yes that's exactly what a hacker would do we're here to make things better this last two days of defcon you should see you should have seen that by now it's like that we are actually trying to make things better. We're trying to come up with solutions and we'll talk about vulnerabilities, but at the same time, we also talk about how to fix them. The best thing though that's been going on is that we now have blue armies. We actually have now uh, places where you can actually report those bugs, report those vulnerabilities to companies, and you actually get money for it. That's actually pretty cool. It's like, so now, Instead of just being seen as an outsider, as a, crim a possible criminal, it's like we're actually helping make software and companies more secure by actually developing a, a, a resource to actually have those discoveries reported responsibly to the company. There are several companies, I have to apologize, I know there are some Chinese companies that I'm not familiar with. Here are some of the uh, Western ones that you can contact and get bounties for. And they will contact you and they will work with you and help you responsibly disclose those uh, vulnerabilities. And this is an important service that is provided. It's like not just for the hackers that are getting money, but more importantly, it's helping the companies that are trying to respond. It's like they're trying to make their products safer. that are trying to make their, their customers more secure. This is what it's used for. It's like, it is not a, a barter exchange. It's not some kind of dark web, uh, you know, secret place where they're trying to sell and exchange vulnerabilities for money to exploit and damage those companies. It is actually used to actually help and better those companies. And that's one of the key things. 
you also have companies that have realized, they have come together and they've realized we need better security. So they are reaching out directly to the communities. And I have been at several conferences here where Microsoft or Apple have been here and have interacted with the local hackers to actually work with them to help discover vulnerabilities. It's like um, not everybody is on board with creating these uh, vulnerability programs. Uh, I think they should. And I just put Cisco there because, you know, we all like to pick on Cisco. So um, uh, there should be more involvement with more major companies. It's like who are dealing with these kind of security vulnerabilities. They should have a way for it to be reported to them in a responsible manner and reward the person who discovers it. That is a key thing. Now, I want to uh, take a moment because I want to, it's like, we're talking about what hackers mean. It's like, now I want to talk a little bit more locally about the, the local culture here and uh, the, uh, the history of how I got here and how um, DEF CON groups and the global community and how we're working. Um, and I'd like to start with a story. I did not get my passport uh, till uh, 10 years ago. Uh, I, I will uh, not say how old I am, but let's say I was middle-aged uh, when I first actually got a passport. And the very first country I went to was China. It's like, it was in November of 2008. Uh, and it was right after the Olympics. XCon had uh, changed their schedule from being in the August to being in November because of the Olympics. And so I was like, and I was doing research on hackers around the world and, and what they're like. And I was like, you know what? There's a problem in the West where people like to talk about what it means to be a hacker in China or what hacking in China is like without ever have gone to China, without have ever seeing it. We get all these perceptions of what it's supposed to be like. And I told myself, I'm not gonna be that person. I'm a hacker. I wanna find the truth and I wanna find it on my own. So I literally, within like two months, I got a passport for the first time and I got a, a ticket, got a hotel and I flew to China. Well, my first day in Beijing, 11 o'clock at night, I figured out that you're not supposed to go into the cabs where the guy comes and tells you and walks you into the parking lot. That's not the best way to, to get to your hotel. Uh, and I'm sitting in my hotel and I'm scared. And, I, and I'm, I'm being honest, I was scared. It's like I had not been scared in a very long time. I used to be homeless. I used to live behind a dumpster. I'm a high school dropout. I was, I, I'm, and it's been a very long time since I've actually felt frightened. But I was, because I, was, I didn't know, I said, what are you doing? Why are you here? It's like, you don't know anybody. You don't know the language. It's like, you've heard all these stories about what it's like. It's like, why did you come here like this? And this is because I wanted to know. And so I woke up that morning, the next morning, and I went to Wang Fujing. It was right off of Wang Fujing is where I was staying. And I started pe seeing people. I didn't see Chinese. I started seeing people walking about doing their business, taking their children to school, going to work for the day. And I started understanding what the problem was. The problem was I was letting other people's perceptions and other people's fears dictate how I saw what it was supposed to be like. I was using other people's references to tell me this is what I should be afraid of. This is what it's supposed to look like. This is what you should uh, know. As soon as I started getting out and looking at China, I walked for 11 hours all the way around um, the Forbidden City, the Zidane District, all the way back up around near Bihai Lake, uh, in between Hohai Lake, and all the way back, I curved all the way back to Wang Fujing. 11 hours I walked. It was amazing because I got to see people doing business. I got to see what China was like, and I loved it. And then I went to the conference after three days, going to Great Wall, to Summer Palace, do all the tourist things. Summer Palace still takes my breath away. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world that I've ever been. Uh, I always go back to the Summer Palace. But I go to the conference, not knowing one, but one person. And you know what happened? I was greeted by Casper. 
And he didn't greet me as an American. He didn't greet me as a foreigner. He greeted me as a friend that he just met. He greeted me as a fellow hacker. I was instantly at ease at that conference. I may not have known the language, but I knew the people. I didn't know what the customs were, but I knew I was with other hackers. And that's what meant the most to me. And that's why I keep coming back every year. That's the reason why I keep visiting, because I'm at home here. It's like, because that's what Casper and them bring out. They actually bring out that spirit of, of hacker and community. And so I wanted to share that with everybody. So I've come more and more and I've spoken here at several times, but what else I wanted to do was I wanted to, uh, when I was asked by the dark tangent, uh, Jeff Moss, to be the global ambassador for DEF CON groups, my first mission was to come to China, to come to Asia and make sure that we got DEF CON groups involved here because this should be a global community. And that's the way I think. I think globally. I've gone to over 40 countries. I've never met a foreigner. It's like, we're all the same kind of people. We have different, you know, money. We may look different or talk different, but when it comes down to it, we're the same people. And so I wanted a DEF CON groups to be an actual global uh, community, not just mostly in the West. And we've done a lot of things like that. We've uh, uh, expanded by leaps and bounds uh, with different groups everywhere. We've got a, recently we've got a new group in Algeria. We got a new group in Saudi Arabia, another one in South Africa. It's like there and several, just as you saw yesterday, that are flourishing here in China. And that's amazing because that's what it's about. It's a global community. There, I, I tell people that there's nothing worse than letting invisible lines on a map get in the way of making a new friend. Because when you look at the earth from space, it's like you don't see lines. You don't see borders because it's just people. And that's what global community is about. It's about going to a conference like this. And no matter where you're from, you have something in common. You're here to learn. I hope so. You're here to make something. Some people are just here to party, you know? It's like, uh, especially at the DEF CON in Las Vegas. It's like, uh, but that's fine too, because you also learn while you're there. You can't help but learn if you keep an open mind and you're curious. And that's what our global community should be about. It should be the connecting of everyone, no matter what country, and a common goal of education, of learning something new. Because when I look at a picture like this, I don't see businessmen. I don't see hackers. I don't see bankers. I don't see school teachers. I don't see Chinese. I don't see Koreans. I don't see Americans. I don't see Canadians or people from Paraguay. What do I see? I see people. Why do we put the labels on ourselves? Why do we make just saying a hacker automatically makes a person bad? Why do we always automatically say being a banker is somebody bad? Why do we always say being a lawyer is bad? Because trust me, in mostly every culture I've been to, there's always lawyer jokes. It's like everybody makes, likes to make lawyer jokes. But it's like, but why being a lawyer is bad? It's like, why are we letting that label change the fact that we're dealing with people? We're dealing with humans. And that's the way it should be. Because there's a lot of myths out there when you hear about uh, the CTF, Capture the Flag, when you hear about some of the things that go on at conferences, they learn about how to break into uh, uh, Wi-Fi, or they're learning how to steal cars, or they're learning how to lockpick. It's like, uh, and break into doors. Oh my gosh, that's scary. Whew, right? They're learning where the flaws are in Wi-Fi. They're learning where the flaws are in the car. They're learning where the flaws are in the locks so they can make them better. So they can make them more secure. And by making those things more secure, they make you more secure. They make the network more secure. 
the best thing that we have between us and criminals are hackers because they're the ones that are trying to strive to make things better, to learn where the vulnerabilities are, to learn where the flaws are and get them fixed. It's like, and us, this conference is encapsulated to me, I think, by Confucius. It's like, I think he understood it. Some of the quotes that I picked out were, the man who asks a question is a fool for a minute. The man who does not ask is a fool for life. I think that's pretty true. Every truth has four corners. As a teacher, I give you one corner and it is for you to find the other three. Reviewing what you have learned and learning anew, you are fit to be a teacher. <laughs> Acquire new knowledge whilst thinking over the old and you may become a teacher of others. Education breeds confidence. Confidence breeds hope and hope breeds peace. The ideal teacher guides his students but does not pull them along. He urges them to go forward and does not suppress them. He opens the way but does not take them to the place. Have you not experienced that here at DEF CON? That's what it's about. At the Hardware Hacking Village, are they giving you those uh, electronics, those happy jacks, and are they assembling them for you? Are they saying, here, buy this one and it's uh, already finished, it's already blinking lights? No. They're giving you that one corner. They're giving you that one section, and then they're giving you an avenue to find the other three. They're showing you, they have a village there to show you how to solder it, to show you how the wiring works, to show you how to make it light up, to be the way it's supposed to be. Because that's what it's about to be at DEF CON. We can't just give you the answers. We can't just hold it onto a plate. You have to want to search. You want to have to question. You have to be curious. You have to be asking why. And that's what's a good teacher and is a good student. It's like someone who's always going to ask why. But also we have a problem in the reverse with perceptions. I have a problem with hackers. It's not just me having problem with what I call normal people. It's like I have a problem with hackers as well sometimes. And one of the biggest problems is when we get upset that people think that hackers are criminals, people in security People in hacking think that executives and users are stupid or that they're dumb or they don't know what they're doing. Well, guess what? That's just as wrong. We cannot meet in the middle ground unless we're both open to understanding that the person that we're talking to, though may be different in a different profession, still wants the best thing. An executive in the company that you work for wants the company to be profitable. They want the company to do well. You, as a security researcher, wants the company to do well. That's a common goal you can find. You may have disagreements on how to get there. You may not fully understand each other's methods on how you get there. But the goal is always the same. That's what should bind you. So when you're thinking and you're dealing with people who may not understand what it means to be a hacker, you don't dismiss them. You don't just say, well, you're an idiot. You don't understand. I don't need to waste my time with you. You teach them. It's like when we hear about people in the hacking community and I get questions all the time. How do I become a hacker? How do I get involved in security? And I always say the same thing. If you ask me these questions, you're already a hacker. I can't make you one. If you want more resources, resources to how to get better, I can help you with that. If you need avenues on how to learn more, I can help you with that. But I can't make you one. You have to be one. It's like, so I'm gonna go and say, where do we go from here? To me, this is a big question and I love this path, this is the 99 Dragon Path off of Tinman Mountains, I was there, and it was really, and, and it's a perfect thing the way we're, we're going and reaching the future, because this is a very scary bus ride down, down the hill. Uh, I, I have taken it, and 
Um, but it's a beautiful ride. It's breathtaking and it's awesome to do. But you do get a little nervous on the journey. And that's where we're at right now. We're starting this path down and it's up to us to work together to make sure that it's to a, a great destination. There's nothing that we do alone. It's all together as a community. So I wanna end it with the community. I wanna end it with you by saying, let's ask questions.